Hello everyone, this is Reza and it's time to explore a new topic. In this series of videos, we're going to focus on the application Foundry in Nuke. We're going to introduce the application and gradually but surely talk about techniques and capabilities. This topic was suggested by many of you, so I hope you all enjoy it. Now let's explore the user interface and talk about Nuke in general. So Nuke is a node-based compositing program that gives you a schematic view of all of your operations throughout individual nodes. That all these nodes can actually control the operation as opposed to a layer-based compositing application like Premiere or After Effects, well, mainly After Effects we're talking, that all the operations are inside a layer. That You can extend the layer, you can nest the layer, but everything is layered-based. So there's a big difference here. Now, the application itself has got three main areas. We've got the viewer, We've got the node graph and the property bin. Now, each main pane may come with additional tabs, which you can at any point of time close. Or you can even go to this icon right here and even close the pane. So I'm just having the viewer and the property bin. I can go to background renders and close that and then go to this pane and also close the pane that way. Now every time you run into this where you probably by accident close any tabs or panes you can just go shift F1 that's your panic button or go to workspace current workspace and reset the workspace to get everything back. Nuke is a session-based application, so by closing these tabs and panes, you're not closing the application. The application is still open, although you don't see anything in the viewer. The application and the file is still working. So all you need to do is just to go to workspace and reset the workspace. Now, when you reset the workspace, you not, may not be able to see anything because the viewer is not attached. Again, I'm going to go back to the basics where everything is controlled by nodes. So if I select one node and I press 1, the viewer will get attached to the image that I've selected. And as a result of that, you see the result in the viewer pane. Now we have different workspace, which I found quite useful. So this is one of my favorite workspace where you have more space for your node tree. So if you have a lot of nodes um, and you would like to see your node tree, you, it allows you to kind of navigate back and forth while you have control over your visibility or, or viewer pane and the property bin. The shortcut for that is uh, Shift F2. And then you have this guy, where it's quite the opposite, and the focus will be on the viewer itself. And you have, um, to some degree, optimal control over your node tree through your node graph here. And then you have scripting. If you're an R&D person, if you like to create nodes from scratch, or write plugins for Nuke, then that would be the preferred workspace for you. And of course, we have animation where you can just put 2D elements and use the graph editor to your advantage or curve editor as Nuke calls it and animate 2D components here and there. And that's the perfect layout for that. And then we have the floating one where the viewer is a floating window. This um, graph node or node graph is a separate 
window and it's perfect if you have two monitors so that's usually my preferred way of working I usually drag this viewer to one monitor work with um, my node graph in another monitor and that, that gives me the the perfect space to be able to navigate go back and forth and you know it kind of eliminates that zooming in zooming out panning to left and right because everything is big you know the space is sufficient for you to just work your way now because i'm recording only one monitor i switch back to the default compositing workspace now we talked about the viewer itself we talked about the pane and and the tabs let's talk about what's going on inside each tab so the first one is that viewer that we talked about so every time you want to view you can either go from the viewer to the node or from the node to the viewer to see the result you can have two attach to the viewer at the same time and one thing you need to be mindful of when you work with nuke is nuke is very sensitive about where your mouse is positioned so you don't need to click on an area to activate the pane as long as I hover my mouse in here this area is now being activated so the shortcut you may use will have different meanings if you have the cursor position in different areas so you really need to be aware of that now if I hover my mouse here in node graph and uh, toggle between one and two by pressing one and two numerical uh, buttons on my keyboard you can see now I can toggle between the two I can even select the third one and press three on it to connect it and you can see the uh, the number three appears I can just keep going select this guy and press uh, number four to have four inputs I believe you can have up to ten inputs to one viewer but that's very uncommon what I usually do I only connect two to just compare uh, or to go back and forth between two different variations but you really don't need to plug every single node into one viewer now to detach you have few ways of doing it you can either click on that arrow left mouse button let go you can select the node and press Control shift x on PC or command shift x on Mac to detach it or you can select the node you go to view and extract does the same thing there are so many nodes available here for you to choose from and you may not know which one you should start with the ones with the um, hotkey are the important one if you kind of count them you see that there are like 10 15 nodes that are available to you that you can choose from now the one that I used here I'm gonna select this node and press 1 bring the viewer in here I'm gonna zoom in and press 1 this um, is just a simple JPEG and I have this blur node now let's see how I made this blur node to begin with so I'm gonna press uh, you can actually press Control shift x to detach it or you can just simply delete it we're going to start from scratch before i talk about how to create nodes just so you know because i just did this it's alt left mouse button to pan and scroll to zoom in and zoom out if you do alt right mouse button it does the same thing as left mouse button so that's how you pan and that's how you zoom in and zoom back you don't need to hold down alt for zooming and zoom back your scroller does this for you alternatively you can just hold down the middle mouse button and do the pan without holding alt now now we know how to orient 
around the scene or pan around the scene I should say let's talk about notes so there are many ways of doing this one is to choose them from here for example if I go to filters I know that blur is here so I can click and create one now if you select your node and then go to blur it attaches the node for you so you don't need to bring it and attach it that's a bit of a time saver now another way of doing this is to use the shortcut if there is any shortcut or hotkey assigned to the tool so the hotkey for blur is B so if I select the node and press B Nuke is creating the node for you pressing delete and a preferred way once you get the hang of the situation and know tools and commands more is to press tab and tab brings a long list of nodes or if you don't see it in the drop down list you just type it in with my arrow key I'm going to select blur and press enter and there you have it so there are many ways of doing this but gradually but surely you come up with your own method and you prefer one method over another I personally use tabbing a lot so let's say I have this I'm gonna get rid of the extra one and if I double click on it you can see I can see the properties in the property bin now it's time to introduce the brand new property bin we didn't talk about before so any item that you double click on you can see the property here now there's a number two here this means that I get to see two property bins open at the same time and I believe the default um, number for this is 10 which is a lot it it for me it's very confusing so I usually work with just one so double click you see the property bin double click you see the property bin um, but you can have more than one if you want to to have that you go to edit and you go to preferences and to control panel and you can see max node in property bin set to 2 you can always restore the default and get the default value but I manually punched in 2 because that's uh, that's basically what I want to have here now if you look at the property bin it says that if you want to apply blur to this you can apply it to all the channels or single channel or just the alpha channel now it is really important to think about channels versus layers but we will get to that very very quickly now I can select the node press control shift and X to detach it from the node let's say I want to swap that with the saturation that I have here I just want to swap the node here there's a really good shortcut for it and that shortcut is control shift with the node selected or command shift now with that I can swap the node you select the saturation control shift you select it drag it over and you swap the node now um, one good example that I brought here because I, we talked about the input and we talked about the output there's another one here and that's why I created that rectangle by the way this rectangle is nothing more than a, just a simple rectangle that you can just play with it's a node creates a simple rectangle right now the reason that I created that rectangle I'm gonna connect my saturation to my read node is to explain this node right here it's a mask so you can basically mask a region if you have a black and white input such as the rectangle node you can just connect that and then when you select the saturation and press 1 
you can see if I now go and desaturate my image, it desaturates the area within the mask. So I can actually select the rectangle, you know, if you can view it and make it a bit smaller. Now, if you connect the saturation, you've got the smaller region, but it respects the mask input that you created. All of these nodes have that mask input, even the rectangle has the mask input. So that's how you use the mask input. I can just use the shortcut that I talked about. I'm just gonna bring this guy over here. So control shift swap. And now add a little bit of blur and you can see only the white portion of my mask will get affected. Now, if I zoom in, you can see that I have three color chips here, red, green, and blue. In here, I have four, red, green, blue, and white. If I scroll or pan, I have five here, red, green, blue, white, and dark green. I also have this where red, green, and blue are dots rather than rectangles. So let's explore uh, what, what, what they mean and what the indication and what, what you get out of this. So um, as an analogy, because so many of you can actually relate to software like Photoshop, is when I bring one object or layer over another, all of a sudden you get two layers, one layer is overwriting another layer. Let's say I'm going to use my magic wand tool, select these areas, control shift I, and then create a mask. If I go to channels, I have RGB, red, green, blue, alpha. I also have layers, similar to Nuke where we have channels, R, G, B, and A, and on the top of the viewer, we have layers. So this is channels. We're looking at R, G, B. If I bring this uh, or connect this viewer to the color wheel, I think that's more like it. Um, we have R, G, B, red, green, the keyboard for it is G, blue and alpha. You can also go R, G, B, A on your keyboard and if you press the last word then you toggle to R, G, B. So if I pick red with R and press R again you switch back to R, G, B. So you have channels and then you have layers. You have just R, G, B, R, G, B with alpha, just an alpha, and if you have other passes embedded into one image, then you will see them here. Within each RGB, there is no alpha, and that's why you get none. If I go to RGBA, Nuke says, well, you picked RGBA, so there must be alpha within that RGB. And you can just create or put in or change your alpha within each one of these, channels. Things may get a little bit out of control, so I suggest not to play around with this if you're new to it, but you need to know how they operate. We have another one here, but that is just the color space. So the color space is sRGB if you're working on monitors, broadcast devices will be RIC 709, so on and so forth. So I usually tend to keep that to sRGB unless I have specific instructions to switch to other workspaces. Now, let's see why this uh, small dots in here. If I bring this and attach that to the color wheel and double click on it, so see it in the property bin, as soon as I start increasing the size, those will get 
longer. So if I go here, as you can see, RGB get longer. The reason that RGB get longer but not the alpha, because look at the channels. I'm just targeting RGB, not RGBA. If I select RGBA, then all four color chips get that rectangular shape, saying that this modifier is now affecting four channels. I hope it makes sense, but you will get more comfortable with it as the time progresses. Now let's finish this video by introducing the merge node, the big almighty merge node. So that's, um, that's a very useful node when you want to combine two images. So in Photoshop you notice that I just dragged and dropped one over another. We use merge node to get those done. Now the keyboard for merge node is M. Now we've got pipe A and pipe B. So pipe A usually goes to foreground and pipe B goes to background. B for background. And you can press 1 to view. Now you can see that Nuke automatically got rid of the black portion using the alpha channel. Now the over state definitely helps. So if you put one over another, one object over another, then merge node can be quite helpful. You can actually put one under. So this color wheel is now under the checkerboard. Now, one thing that I haven't had a chance to discuss is the resolution. So you need to be aware of the resolution in your scene. If I go to edit, and project settings and in here full size resolution is 9 1920 to 1080 now if I come over here I can see I have an image I'm gonna press a on it and you immediately see the resolution for that image it's not 1920 to 1080 it's 1200 to 675 I've got another one I'm gonna press 1 on it and that one is 4K. So what's going to happen if I merge these two? So if I select connect the viewer to the merge node, B to background, A to foreground, all of a sudden I get a tiny image over a big screen. Now you have two ways of fixing this. Um, one way is to reduce the resolution in the background to match the foreground, but that's not something that you always want. Um, and the other one is to bring this into another application, make it bigger, and adjust the position there, but that's not really efficient. Uh, we don't want to introduce the middle, like a, a bridge in here. We want to finish everything from start to finish in Nuke. So both of these solutions still cannot respect the size format that we specified here as well. So to fix that problem, is we can use a node, I'm going to press tab called reformat, and that reformats any node that you have with different resolution, and it tries to kind of reformat it to the specified resolution that we have in the project setting. So it kind of reads this drop down from this drop down, HD1080, and if I drag and drop, then all of a sudden my background is 1080. And you can do the same thing for the foreground and make the foreground 1080 as well. Now, if I zoom in, I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but we've got some really weird smearing effect going on here. And that is because Nuke doesn't know what to do with the pixels when they reach that border. Um, there are many ways to fix this. You can actually make Nuke to kind of black the outside and add it to the transparency. We have actually a node called black outside to do that for you. So the node name suggests its functionality and that's exactly what it does. Or another way is to use a node called transform. Now we do need transform because this image is already too small. 
in my opinion. So we want to bring it over, we want to make it bigger, we want to rotate it probably. And there is no move tool, there is no rotate tool, there is no scale tool here, as you have noticed. So all of these operations can be done through transform tool or node. And that transform node is actually a very popular node. The hotkey for it is the letter T. So if I bring it over, connect, and now connect pipe A to transform. Look, if I double click on it and bring it into the property bin, look what we have. We have actually black outside embedded inside the transform property. Now that's very helpful. I can actually um, now select this gizmo, bring it here, I can zoom in. You can actually see that I can rotate if I want to. I can scale if I want to, so I can just bring this over, 2D scale if I want to. I can 3D scale, or not 3D scale, but proportionate scale, XY scale if I want to. Or you can double click on it and actually use these sliders to reposition, rotate. You can even select the center and change the pivot. So everywhere you want to pivot this, you can actually fix it that way. But that's how I fix the position of the layer when you place it on top of another layer. Now, every time you want to get rid of gizmos on your display layer, you can just either collapse the layer in your property bin, or you can just hide it or remove it temporarily from your property bin. And that gets rid of the, the gizmo. If you want to bring it back, you double click on the node and you have it back. You can either collapse it or get rid of it. Now, while I have this here, we've got a few buttons here. Um, if I zoom back and go like that, with the node selected, this button here is going to center the node for you. So you can actually zoom in and find it. The button right next to it shows you the input node for that selected node. So the input node for that selected node, it says read six, which is this one, read six. Now, before we finish, one last node that I would like to introduce is a read node. So you can notice that I actually brought all of these images. Um, it was there. I just loaded the scene. But you can actually go to this drop down and say read. And that gives you read node. So you can kind of bring the color wheel that way. You can press R and bring an image that way. Or you can simply drag and drop your content in the node graph and load them that way. All right, that should do it for the first session. So we talked about a lot of things. In the next session, we're going to talk about footage, bit depth, and how to render or output the image. Have a good day and talk to you soon.